The Great Barrier Reef Marine Park is one of Australia's most well-known features. The park was first established in 1975. Oil spills and other industrial activity caused the Australian government to take action in preserving the vast ecosystem and limiting any future damage. Today, the Marine Park Authority is responsible for the management of the Great Barrier Reef. The reef system stretches over 2,000 kilometers in length and occupies more than 300,000 square kilometers in area. There are nearly 3,000 individual reefs in the network, making it not only the longest continuous reef system, but also a biodiversity hotspot with over 1,500 species of fish. Economically as well, the reef is valued at approximately $5.5 billion annually. So what are some of the causes of the decline for the barrier reef? Several factors are involved, with human activities of course making up the bulk. The biggest challenge facing the reef today is undoubtedly climate change. The concerns that rapidly rising ocean temperatures leave many types of marine biota unable to adapt to the change of pace. In the past two decades, there have been several large coral bleaching events. Lots of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere raises carbon dioxide in the water known as ocean acidification. High concentrations of CO2 interferes with photosynthetic ability and causes further bleaching. With this loss of coral function from thermal stress, many marine species are left without viable habitat space, resulting in an overall decrease of local biodiversity. Exacerbating this issue are other human cost effects like sediment runoff from streams and rivers, which then pour into the coastal reefs and limit sunlight penetration. Expanding agricultural lands also contribute an overabundance of nutrients, commonly potassium, nitrogen, and phosphorus, into the water system that ends up in the ocean. This excess of nutrients spurs algae outbreaks, and with lower fish populations from overfishing and bleaching events, it means less fish to regulate these eruptions. With no controls in check, macroalgae soon take over what were once coral reef systems. This is known as a phase shift, another driver of reef degradation. To make matters worse, there have also been increasing episodes of the dreaded crown of thorns starfish, a prime predator of coral systems. What were once an uncommon occurrence are now becoming a regular sight. Natural cases of cyclones also assist in wiping out reef habitat. How is the Reef Marine Park Authority handling all this? Well, even though climate change is the biggest issue, there's not much they can do since it's on a global scale. Instead, they hope to mitigate local area effects to increase the resiliency of the marine park. There are now prohibited and restricted activities across the region. No take zones, areas that don't allow for any fishing or removing of biota, have increased from less than 5% to roughly a third of the entire park as of 2004. The new protected areas also include zones of no entry and up to 70 bioregions that incorporate non-reef habitats. There is also a multi-use framework in effect, classifying certain areas for certain activities, industrial or recreational. Monitoring these areas helps to enforce the regulations. Efforts have also been made to reduce sediment and nutrient loads making their way into the ocean by improving land use management strategies. Despite being called one of the best managed ecosystems on the planet and employing an overhaul in management techniques, most of the Great Barrier Reef has experienced severe decline in coral cover. And as climate change continues, more intense cyclones are expected to destroy reef structures and increase bleaching events. It's not all bad though. The northern aspect of the Great Barrier Reef has maintained its coral cover since 2004, showing that with less human activity, it is possible for these ecosystems to be resilient. As well, non-reef habitats make up 95% of the marine park and have seen a 30% increase in protection Trawling that commonly takes place here is not assessed to have a major impact on species at risk. And thanks to no entry zones, 
fish stocks have substantially increased in these protected areas, with rises in nearby habitats benefiting as well. It's thought these population gains will then be able to help supplement fish stocks on reefs that currently allow for fishing. Greater shark numbers have also been observed at deeper depths in no-take and no-entry zones, up to 30 times as much for some species. There's still much work to be done. Most conducted studies call for extensive and long-term monitoring of sites and a significant change in human land use practices to reduce sediment and nutrient runoff to create healthy reef systems that will be able to adapt to future environmental conditions.